wholeness. Welcome to Notes of Naja Rashida. Um, may this message find you well and whole. Um, I have a bit more energy today. I just grabbed a bite to eat. And I just, I've been reading, I'll show you, Edgar Casey, Modern Prophet, four complete books um, on prophecy, religion, and psychic experience, mysteries of the mind, and reincarnation. Um, previously, I've been, I was reading a book on goddess, or called the goddess, written by two men and I just couldn't really connect with the vibe of the book it was very um because I I hold women who run with the wolves by Clarissa Pinkola says in such high regard that any book dealing with the archetypes of women or femininity um you know without that critical psychological analysis um by like I, and I think she was a student of Carl Jung I believe I'm not quite sure but she studied a lot of his works and so she incorporated that in the in the women who run with the wolves or women who run with wolves um but in the the last goddess uh book that I tried to read I just couldn't finish it I couldn't get into it it was just pretty much listing off all these goddesses and they're tied to like the creation story of humanity and then that's as far as they went it didn't go into it didn't correlate between the the women in society now to you know the ancient archetypes you know it was just very bland and very superficial so I just I couldn't finish it I used to have this rule where I would force myself to read books that um I wasn't really into but now it's like I respect the nature of reading in the sense of if I feel called to read a book I will read the book thoroughly and study it reread it if there isn't a connection to to me it's just saying that it's not the right time not the right place to read that book so um I yes I am reading um Edgar Casey's works but I was so inspired and I don't even, I haven't really sat down and watched like, or read like a whole hour or two hours of the book, but, um, I'll pick it up, read small snippets and then I get inspired and I just, it's, it's deep. He's a, he was a very deep individual, very talented, very gifted individual. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't really get, I, one of the reasons why I find Edgar Casey's work so inspiring is that it's not about his, the psychic gifts or the spiritual gifts that he, you know, um, shared in his service to humanity. It was more of the mastery of the self. I am all about that. I'm all about mastery of self because once you master the self, whatever that means, right, is it can mean many different things. It can mean it can mean meeting Christ consciousness. It can mean meeting your spirit, meeting your inner child. It can mean, um, you know, meeting your, are you reuniting with certain aspects of the self that makes you a better servant. And that makes you, it puts you in a much better place to be of service for others, um, for your spouse, for your children, for your community, for your business. Um, for anything that you are connected to. So I just wanted to share that before I got into today's topic, which is about self-understanding. Um, you have to act to serve, to love, to dare, if you desire to know the self. And, you know, it's, it's quite fascinating what's happening and what's been happening, I think, probably for millennia with the human uh, nature, human condition. And now that we are very much into the beginning of the digital age, um, on our planet and how it's affecting the human collective, the consciousness of the human collective, it's in a way, yes, it's making life more convenient for us, but in some regards it's making it, um, lazy. I think there is a spiritual laziness, there is a materialistic laziness, there is a mental laziness, an emotional laziness. Um, we are all imitating each other 
And even with all the trends and the re repetitiveness, even with our creativity, you see, um, because Hollywood, the Holly weird, the entertainment industries are a reflection of the frequency and vibration of human humanity at this time. And I find that art reflects life, right? And I find that with the, um, and you know, using the Hollywood as an example where I think that human creativity has, has either been dampened or it has become so stagnant that they keep repeating and recycling old creative ideas, right? It, it's gotten to the point where they'll have five different versions of Spider-Man. They'll have five different versions of a song to the point where the, the, the intensity of hearing a, an original piece of work is so watered down and it just it it dampens the magic and the pull and the magnetism of that creative work there's a laziness that's taking place even with spirituality right um you know it's very easy to sit and watch a video on someone's spiritual spiritual journey and, and sharing their spiritual concepts like myself right um but it's a whole nother thing when you go out and you seek and you dare to encompass a journey within the self. It's easy to read a book, to buy CDs, to buy, to go on a little retreat, right? It's a whole nother thing when you, and well, going on retreats is, is, is actually part of doing the work, right? You, you are, you are taking your body and your mind and your, your intention becomes activated when you're placing yourself in the uh, at the foot of the all right you make you open yourself you become vulnerable to the hidden truths within yourself and it isn't until you have mastered your own inner patterns right your own setbacks why you do the things that you do and you study that that's when things begin to unlock. That's when the manifestations begin to unlock. That's when truths and realizations and even psychic gifts begin become activated because you are choosing to connect to the self. You have to dare to do it. You have to have this fearlessness, right? Or feel you feel the fear, but you do it anyway. Um, taking action, right? Being of service to others. So, you know, seeing yourself in other people, that's part of being of service. When you're of service, whatever that may look like for you, it you begin to understand yourself better, right? You begin to hold compassion for yourself because you can see yourself in other people. And you hope and pray that people can see themselves in, you know, in you, right? They can see themselves. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. They can see themselves in you, you see themselves, you see yourself in them. It's this beautiful, you know, connectivity, this, this, this dance. Um, so yes, self understanding is pivotal for me. I can, I guess I can only speak for myself and I would say, and I would advise, you know, to look into it. There are many people out there who are completely content with where they're at completely content with suffering, with the joy, with anything and everything that's happening within their, their lives. And then there are people like myself that want to know the self, the demons and the angels, the dark and the light, um, so that I may be of better service, you know? So, um, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say and to share in this message anyway, I just thought it was so profound, you know, um, yeah, so let me know how you feel or think about this message and, you know, if you can relate to it at all, and if not, that's fine, I don't, you know, it's neither here nor there, but, um, yes, to understand self is to overstand and understand all that is, and, you know, redefining a lot of the experiences that tend to hold us back 
when we have that power to redefine those experiences, it's, it liberates us. Thank you so much for tuning in. Goodbye.